Now, some of the um, haters that um, Dan will, can relate to. Now, I haven't had haters in a long time, Dan. And, and you show up and all of a sudden I got haters on YouTube. Uh, the, uh, some say that the show is going to be a better show because you're here. Okay. Some say the opposite, the, the dead opposite. Okay. You all know better than to say good morning to me. Um, not just because I had my Gurkha knife when I was uh, in Nepal recently. Uh, we had Gurkhas in the audience, and um, those are the fierce Nepal Indian fighters that supposedly protect the Queen of England. Um, the um, this will be a transformational week, uh, even for the likes of Mr. Uh, Dan uh, Locke uh, and uh, the likes of uh, 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 Jason Nagy, another. Uh, soon to be on the Hall of Fame, uh, who's in the attendance. Um, and it seems to be getting better and better. Uh, I'd like to uh, use the analogy of a fine wine getting older, but I'm way past getting older because I'm uh, uh, old enough to either be your father or grandfather, except for one, even the one older guy, I'm probably just barely old enough to be his dad. Um, but it's gonna be, uh, thank you, Edward. And if, um, not if, when you attain uh, the uh, aspirations of your dreams, you too shall have a valet butler uh, like Edward, and uh, who has served in the, in the palace amongst other places. But that palace meaning the Buckingham Palace. Um, last night you had, uh, except for the couple people, three people that were uh, caught up uh, with, with transportation uh, and baggage, um, you had uh, you saw movies. Every night you're going to see movies. Um, every night, and by the way, what I have in my hand isn't a piece of shit. It's a frog, and it's and I. I and why do I keep a frog in my hand? And why do I wear frog ties? And why do I wear frog cufflinks? Because I'm forever kissing frogs, looking for opportunities. And the biggest reason that the kids that are successful from here, and you'll all be successful at some degree. Some of you come out of the gates like a rabbit. I mean, you can't even see your back end. Some of you come out like uh, turtles. And remember, a turtle can only move forward when it's most exposed, when it sticks its legs and head out. And some of you come out of the gates like three-toed sloths. Looking around the room, I see two or three three-toed sloths. That means you move about six or seven inches a day. But even at a three-toed sloth pace, you will be outpacing the competition. And one of the things that you're gonna learn here, if you haven't already surmised it, is there really is no competition. Uh, when Jason tells his story from Adelaide, uh, Australia, for those of you that don't know where Adelaide is, it's the asshole of the earth. It's the rectum of the earth. You know how when you look at a rectum, the, the wrinkles, the, the anus and the wrinkles? Well, he comes from one of those wrinkles, crenellations. Um, it works there. It works everywhere. We have kids, and I call you kids either because I'm old enough to be your father or grandfather. We have kids doing it on all continents. Um, we have kids doing it in virtually all the countries. Some of the countries are a little more difficult. Russia is a little tougher. Um, certain uh, Venezuela is a little tougher. And uh, the, the countries that have the, the, the most um, um, destruction vis-a-vis -vis communism and or just fraud and bribery, they're a little tougher. But we've got kids doing this in Ethiopia, Kenya, uh, you name it. Even Canada, of all places, Canada. Even VC, Vancouver, uh, which I'll be uh, uh, having the pleasure of speaking at Dan's um, big gig black tie gig uh, in a few weeks. Virtually every place, bumfuck Oklahoma, you name it and uh, we've accomplished it, uh, QLA. We meaning you doing all the hard work and me beating you from 60,000 feet Concord level. Um, the, um, you're gonna hear a kid um, that just finished the seminar in July. One month ago yesterday, he left here. One month ago yesterday and uh, he's about uh, to uh, close a couple of deals. And uh, one of the reasons that the mentor program has been shrunk, shortened so much, is that when we ran the stats, and for I don't run spreadsheets, but when the spreadsheets were run, we realized, uh, which I intuitively thought, and Sally always told me, they use you as a crutch. Because when I say I could do it, I could do it in three weeks. Leave here, close the deal. Okay, let's double it for the meatheads. Six weeks. Let's add three more weeks because you're retarded. Nine weeks. And let's add a couple more weeks just for fun. And lo and behold, we've got guys doing deals almost overnight. Overnight vis-a-vis -vis the path. Now, some of the um, haters that um, Dan will, can relate to. Now, I haven't had haters in a long time, Dan. And, and you show up and all of a sudden I got haters on YouTube. Uh, the, uh, some say that the show's gonna be a better show because you're here, okay? Some say the opposite, the dead opposite, okay? Um, the, um, 
but it's going to be interesting because you've got people that have experienced QLA, one for many years and one for the last two or three years. And I believe, uh, I don't believe, I know that the stories are going to be pretty much the same. Now, the, um, the seminar name hasn't changed, uh, but a little. Now, I do feel very holy. Namaste. Uh, I don't know what it was about um, Nepal. Uh, I certainly have never been uh, thought about being a Buddhist ever, um, but I didn't realize how many fans I had there. I was overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed. And uh, the, uh, the kids were just super nice to me. I didn't understand or realize that I had rich Nepalese Buddhist fans flying me around in helicopters, which cost money. And so uh, my birthday week, as it turned out, celebration, and especially my birthday, uh, the day of my birthday, was very pleasant and they were very nice to me, very kind. And uh, the, uh, the kids were uh, super. And I hadn't realized how beautiful the, uh, the country is and the UNESCO heritage uh, sites, etc. And uh, Sally and I are already planning to go back. And uh, the, we went to uh, 18,300 feet, I, I believe. Uh, we were six or 700 feet above uh, base cap one. Uh, uh, my, my, my artificial knees and my artificial hip uh, precludes me from climbing anymore, but it doesn't preclude from uh, paying for a fucking helicopter. And so uh, we took a helicopter up and I have to admit, I, I'm a pretty tough guy. We get out of the helicopter at 18,000 feet and I take about three steps and I feel, I haven't been really drunk, drunk, drunk in a long, long time, but that feeling came back to me of being drunk, 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 drunk. And then Sally came up and she put her arm around my waist. I thought she was trying to help me. She's trying to stand up straight too because at 18,000 feet, when you get out of the helicopter, the oxygen deprivation is massive. It's fucking massive. And the, uh, so we uh, took some pictures uh, we kind of staggered us around and then finally, oh, it's back there, okay. And we, we couldn't wait to get back in the goddamn helicopter. I thought I was going to prance around for 20, 30 minutes, but I had no prancing in my legs, no prancing in my legs. And then on the way down, we stopped off at a uh, uh, hotel, which is at about uh, a thousand meters below that. It's called the Mount Everest Hotel. We were the only people there. And uh, the uh, I am the tallest man in Nepal by six, seven, eight inches. Most of the N Nepalese can walk under my armpit. Uh, some of them can, uh, well, this is a slight exaggeration, can walk uh, at my belt buckle. Um, and so um, uh, we stopped off for lunch and then we flew back. Uh, but it, it's, it's, it's quite an experience and I would, uh, I would uh, uh, easily uh, tell anybody uh, they can, if you can climb up. And now I realize why people only go up to uh, base camp one. Because it costs big money to go to the top. 50 grand. And the reason why they had 800 people falling off a cliff on uh, May 29, 30, and 31 this year it's because their permits were running out. And apparently you buy the permit for two or three years. In the last two or three years, there haven't been as many people climbing. So they wanted to not lose their permit. And unfortunately, and you fall off, not going up, coming down, coming down. And so uh, they had seven or 800 people attempt uh, the ascent. Um, but uh, I mean, it costs like uh, 50 bucks. This is an exaggeration. You go to base camp one. Anybody can go to fucking base camp one, but it's the money to go up the, the, the regular, uh, not the regular way, the um, two base camp two, three, four, etc. So it was quite an experience and Sally and I are planning to go back. We want to go to Tibet and um, Nepal is basically half or maybe a third uh, the Mongolian influence and uh, two thirds Indian influence vis-a-vis -vis how they look. And unfortunately, uh, racism is alive and well in Nepal. The Indians look down upon the Mongolian guys, although the Mongolian guys are uh, allegedly uh, uh, descendants from Genghis Khan and so uh, who conquered all that and so but so we, we didn't get in in between that um, but uh, s poverty aside but you can say this about all the pretty places poverty aside it's a terrific place and we stayed at the Yak and Yeti which is the uh, the hotel that uh, you write about or you hear about or read about and it was it was quite enjoyable okay now the seminar um, not just because Namaste. Uh, we've changed it a little. No, actually, we've changed it a lot. And since Dan was here, we've changed it, I mean, 180 degrees. And since Jason was here, we've changed it at least 90 degrees. We now call it the Book of Dan. There is only one true love affair, the one with yourself. All others are expressions of it. If you don't love your fucking self or learn to love yourself, you're going to fail at this. I'm going to say it again slow for the me heads. By the way, Asians are problems. Muslims are problems. Hispanic, Mexican, wetbacks are problems. Fat Jews are problems. Anglo-Saxon white people are problems. Skinny people are problems. Fat people are problems. You're all nothing but a hemorrhoid to me. Yet I still, as this picture 
indicates drag you across the goal line. And if two thirds of the world are Asian. That's why two of the three guys there I'm pulling across the uh, goal line are Asian. We've got about a billion and a half Asians in China. I believe they still call themselves Asians. And we've got about a billion and a half more or less of the Indians, uh, not American Indians but Indian Indians, so that's three billion. Then we got about another billion Asians just running around. So four of the 7.3 or four or five billion people on the planet are Asians, and you're all problems. Black people are problems, even if you're not black. And we have people in this seminar that are as black as the ace of spades that tell me they're not fucking black. It's not vogue to be black anymore. Used to be, when they had afros, it was a thing. Fucking afro hairdo, you know? Fucking white chicks, I mean, what the fuck? But it's not vogue to be black anymore, it's not. The world has changed, and so has the seminar. But if you don't love yourself, and if you don't learn to be selfish, you're gonna fail. When you were a little kid, what did your mom tell you? Share your toys, right? Fuck that kid, kick him in the teeth. You're not gonna give him your toys, fuck him. And that's why you are the way you are. You were taught to be less than. And by the grace of Allah, Buddha, or somebody, I was taught just the opposite. Because I had an animal for a father, a beast. For those of you that didn't have a father, or your father ran away, you suffered. I don't need to tell you. And for those of you that think that you can raise a parent, or a parent, one parent family can raise a family, they're full of shit. Something suffers, something suffers. And I'm not gonna get into gay families, lesbian, I'm not gonna go down that road. I could give a whole fucking seminar on that. But most of what you've heard, today is horse shit. Now, since it was just my birthday, and since Sally and I support a lot of orphanages and missions, this is just one shrine they have to me in Sri Lanka at a mission we support, uh, the, uh, where I have 240 nuns, priests, and brothers pray for me every motherfucking day. All together, I got about 650. Every motherfucking day, three times a day. They say I'm on a rocket ship to heaven. And when they sainted Mother Teresa, making her a saint, who was a bitch, a rough motherfucker, in short time, for the first time in 600 years, they made her a saint in 25 years. And they used that as an example, Mr. Pena, you're gonna be a saint sooner than she was. From their lips to the big man's motherfucking ears, just in case there is a big man. And what you're gonna see is almost all the high performance people, like the one that you saw last night, who is one of the biggest assholes that, the, that, that God or the devil ever created, they all have one thing in common. When they get older, they try to rewrite their legacy. They try to paint a different picture of how they lived all their life, how they raped, pillaged, and plundered. I'm no different. Just in case there is a big man, when I turned 60, I turned over a new leaf, so to speak. I started uh, to uh, believe in social responsibility. I'm still not into saving the world yet. That probably won't happen until I'm 90, if ever. Because I don't give a fuck if the world ends as long as I end the day before it ends. I don't care about my grandkids. I don't care about my fucking kids. And my parents are long gone. And I sure shit don't care about anybody that's ever been in this room, except for my wife. So one, you've learned all the bad stuff. Two, you haven't learned to be selfish. Th uh, three, you haven't learned to love yourself. My two wives, my current wife and my previous wife, if they were standing here, they would say, we love the ground Dan walks on, but our love for him is transitory, non-existent compared to the love he has for himself. Nobody loves Dan Pena more than Dan Pena, nobody. And I've got a lot of sycophants sucking my ass on a daily basis, blowing smoke up my butt. And through guys like Dan and guys like Brian Rose and others, I've got indirectly or directly millions of people I've touched, millions. Um, but they, some see me as the father figure they never had. And even for kids that went to the same school I did, the school, school got explained about, he's the fourth guy in 26 years that went to school where I went. We had another engineer, a black kid, and we had two Asian uh, gals, one uh, Japanese and one Chinese, and he's the fourth. The other three have failed. Not because they went to a school you got to explain about. And just for YouTube again, my university, I've created more wealth by myself than the entire motherfucking alumni since the school began, by a factor of 10 or maybe 100. Yet I am not even in the top 50 of, uh, of a successful alumni that they list. I'm not in the top 100. I'm not even in the top motherfucking thousand. And we all know why, we all know why. The same reason that I've had a lot of difficulty getting my reality show on TV, because I will not promise or guarantee that I won't say fuck cunt vagina, stick it up your ass on TV. Because all the people we're gonna talk about this week talk exactly like I do, off camera. Elon Musk's favorite word is fuck. He gets it three or four or five times in every sentence he speaks. His favorite word is fuck. My favorite word is cunt. But if you put them together, what do you got? Exactly, exactly. I love reading this shit from the nuns. It always starts out peace and goodness, just like I am. Uh, happy birthday, holy family. Now, 35 years ago, a few days ago, I took 
Great Western Resources public on the London Stock Exchange, and I pulled out my first check. I created sixty thousand uh, dollars, took sixty thousand dollars, and made a hundred million pounds, which today is about three hundred twenty million pounds in ninety nine days. You can do that today in less than ninety nine days. You will never experience or attain anything more than your highest expectation. Your craziest expectation, no matter what it is. I looked at your goals; they were pathetic. Well, your net worth, for those of you that have any, are the fucking pathetic. I was rich in my early 30s. I got super rich in my late 30s, and I don't know what they call me now. What have you been doing? Many of you say, well, I never had a mentor. I never had, you know, if I only had met you 25 years ago. I was here 25 years ago. You didn't look very fucking hard. We got a young man in here just out of high school. We're gonna, we're gonna roll, keep rolling. Uh, right, you just got out of high school. You were valedictorian. If I had been valedictorian, I would have already been president in three terms, at least three. And I would have changed the vote, which I think Donald Trump is gonna do, into where you can be president just like Putin. There's not much difference between Putin and Donald. Full uh, disclosure, I know President Trump in another lifetime. I haven't talked to him in two, more than 20 years. Uh, the, um, but I wasn't valedictorian of anything. My parents only had one goal for me, to keep me alive until I reached the age of reason. They didn't know if it was gonna be 20, 25, 30, 35. The last time I got arrested was uh, February 10th, 1977. I was 31 and a half years old. I got arrested for assault with a deadly weapon on a policeman. So I guess I wasn't too mature at 31 and a half, but that was also when I decided I wasn't gonna drive anymore, and I've had a chauffeur ever since. I don't remember beating up the cop, I really don't. I remember them beating me up in, in a cell, where they almost beat me to death, but that, that's a whole other story. But I've, every beating I got, I deserved at least 100 more beatings, 100 more beatings. But that was a, ha did I look happy? You fucking a right, I was happy. Because I took, I did something that had never been done on any stock exchange in the history of the planet, and I've continued to do that. And now you do it through my advice. Now, August the 6th and August the 9th, we had two, 1945, we had two atomic bombs. They don't talk about this anymore, but it came to light when I was in Nepal. For those of you that have seen the movie Godzilla, remember Godzilla came to be because they had atomic explosions on the Polynesian islands and, blah, 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 and he became, you know, back from 160 million years ago. Well, in the late 40s, there was a theory that we're all energy. That's not a theory, we are all energy, right? Uh, and when the uh, two atomic bombs, plus all the other atomic bombs that led up to it, that were tested in uh, New Mexico, changed the DNA of the planet changed the DNA of the planet. Not dissimilar to Godzilla's DNA was changed and he, he developed after uh, the French uh, tested atomic bomb according to the movie. Well, I was born the day after the second, second atomic bomb. The energy in the planet has never been the same. Part of the reason they stopped talking about it is because, was because a thalidomide baby started coming out and they blamed it on the thalidomide drug that they used to give women. But all those thalidomide babies weren't just from the drug, they were from the atomic explosion. But you don't talk about it anymore. Some people say, I am a result of those two atomic explosions because there's nobody like me, not even remotely close. I was born with big balls. Literally, I was. You show, see you pictures of me, I got nuts this fucking big. And my dad was so fucking proud, he didn't know whether to shit or go blind. Look at those nuts. So I am different, as Brian QLA Rose said in the little piece that started this uh, first session. And there aren't anybody like me. There's some reasonable facsimiles. But I was told um, about 35 years ago, if I'd been in the internet, net business, IT, I would have been the first trillionaire on the planet. Because I took 800 bucks, turned it into 450 million, which is 55 million percent. I grew at 67,000 percent a year. You've never met, heard of, or even read about anybody that's grown anything remotely that fast, 55 million percent. And I was in a down market. So what you're getting here are the best of, not the best of, the best of best of best practices, systems, processes, procedures. Whether you use them or not is another story. Now we have kids coming back to me. I got a, um, last year when it was my 25th year, uh, I, I put out uh, uh, to the people that I know, if, uh, if you've created any kind of wealth, please let me know, I'd like to add it to my numbers. I got an email from the, um, uh, U.S. Uh, Bank of Scotland. No, no, uh, um, yeah, it was Bank of Scotland. And um, from the vice chairman, long letter, and it said one of my mentees from 2002 had 840 million cash in the bank. And he, he said, I was instructed to send you this certified letter saying that he had 840 million in cash if you could use it on your number. Had heard from him in 10, 12 years. So I assume if he has 840 million in cash, he's a billionaire because he's got to have some other shit. Haven't heard from him in 10, 12 years. Now, Bruce the Whipple says, 
that there are tens of thousands of people like that. Brian Cule Rose says the same thing. So I've created a lot of money for meatheads similar to you, and the number is now up to 775 billion. And they started calling me the trillion dollar man. And um, the um, this story about the atomic bombs, although I haven't talked about it until I got to Nepal, I thought being in Shangri-La that you know I was kind of in a, a free zone. Um, but maybe it's true. I don't know. There's no way of telling, right? Um, I get uh, uh, emails like this all the time. This is a kid I met for 20 minutes. I told him he was a sorry cunt. He should kill himself. Go join the uh, military. He's Swiss. He's now a sniper with the, uh, the Swiss Air Force um, and a man. Um, this kid went to his tailor and he said, um, I want to dress like Mr. Pena. Make me a suit. I look like Mr. Pena. It looks kind of young. Not me. I don't look like that. That guy's a skinny little shit, but... The, uh, I mean, he dresses like me. Um, the, um, sir, I just want to uh, say you're the first man I've ever met with a pair. I'm 15 years old, uh, but that doesn't matter because it only comes uh, to the toughest son of a bitch uh, in the valley. Bah, 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 bah. Um, the, um, here's a 14 year old. My demographics have changed from 25 to 35 in the last 10 years to 15 to 25. This is an old group. This group is Average age, 37. Youngest, 18. Oldest, 55. You're long in the tooth for the groups because normally they're younger. But the reason why my demographics have changed is because the kids realize their parents are full of shit. They realize school is full of shit. They realize virtually everything they've been taught heretofore is wrong.